I'm Dave Cates, President and CEO of Denison Mines, uh, traded on TSX uh, DML and NYSE Market as DNN, and also President and CEO of uh, Uranium Participation Corp, traded on uh, the TSX as U. So Denison is a uranium development uh, and exploration story focused in the Athabasca Basin. Our flagship asset is a project called Wheeler River. We're at 63.3% on that project uh, and, and our partners are there are Cameco and, and a Japanese group JCU. It's a development asset. Uh, it's the largest undeveloped uranium project in the eastern Athabasca Basin. That's where we've got all the infrastructure from MacArthur, from Cigar, from Key Lake, from McLean Lake. Uh, we own 22.5% of that McLean Lake mill, and really what we're doing is positioning this company as the developer in the region. We're looking to build the next new mine into this cycle, and the idea is we realize that that price discovery hasn't happened yet. We realize that there will be a potential for a shortage of supply from that dysfunctional project pipeline, and the idea is if we're at the front of the queue, the utilities come to us, after they've contracted with Cameco, after they've already bought what Cameco has to sell, they come to us, we build a uranium mine with preferential pricing in the right part of the market. And the idea is really to give investors the maximum amount of torque to a rising price. Uh, if you look at the last cycle, the developers were really the stars, right? They changed their business from being an explorer to a developer to a miner, and actually sold into that higher price market. That's really what we're trying to do with Denison. Well, I really wanted to talk about uh, the uranium market right now, and uh, I think there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in the uranium market. We've seen some major developments in the last few months. I think people are trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, so I've really distilled it down into what I see as five key themes, and I really want to walk through those themes, just uh, help put it into context what's happening. I think the first theme that, that everyone has talked about for the last year, really, has been around the demand narrative. The demand narrative has been challenged significantly uh, over the last year. We've seen a number of countries that are really strong nuclear supporters challenge themselves about whether they should be in nuclear. That's a real thing. Uh, but at the end of all of that, we've also seen that the demand story is still positive. We've seen multiple cuts to demand forecasts, and yet we're still showing global growth from nuclear power in the range of 1% to 4% per year until 2030. Right? So that's still a great demand narrative, even though we've had cuts in, in the past year. Now, number two, we've seen in, in, in the last year significant decisions to curtail production. So we're now talking about the supply side. We've got production coming off from the largest and highest grade uranium mine in the world at MacArthur River, operated by Cameco in the Athabasca Basin. We've seen the Kazakhs cut production in 2017, holding that production mostly flat through 2018 and the next three years potentially. So these are real cuts from like low cost, good quality assets telling us that look, we have an oversupplied market and at the prices we're at right now in that 20 to $25 spot price, there's no money to be made even from the best assets. That brings us to our third theme. And our third theme is all about contract coverage. You know, we've got demand increasing, we've got supply being curtailed, and then we've got the utilities and producers acting in a way that's like in a, in a time vacuum from, from years ago, where they have contracts that they entered into, like say 10 years ago, that are still being delivered into. So producers are still able to produce, but they're selling at a price that isn't at all today's price. Uh, that doesn't continue forever. Those contracts are falling off, and right now we're seeing them serve as a lifeline to high-cost producers. That's going to disappear, and when that happens, we're going to see potentially even more production cuts. Fourth theme on this is, well, what happens when that production comes off and that demand materializes? Where is the supply going to come from? Well, certainly we could see some of these assets that have been turned off come back on, like MacArthur. But we've also got assets that have been mined out, or that are being mined out. Uh, what's going to replace them? And the reality is that our, our, our pipeline of projects is actually quite dysfunctional. We've really got two buckets of, of projects out there in the pipeline. We've got Athabasca Basin, high-grade, large-scale projects. That's what Denison's looking for in the Athabasca and looking to develop. And then we've got African projects, which can also be large-scale, but they're much higher cost. Now, African projects, maybe they can be built in that three to five year time range. So they can be quick, but they need such a high price to be incentivized. In the Athabasca, we might be able to make it work at a lower price, but it's gonna take us four years to permit before we can even build. So we don't really have a source of new production that's gonna come from that quadrant of 
low cost, so low incentive price, and quick to market. And that's why it's dysfunctional, because with those contracts coming off, the utilities will be looking to restock, and they will not necessarily be able to get that material from a new mine. And that's our fifth theme, which is that the utilities continue to be complacent about the market. They aren't contracting right now. Contracting volumes are low. Uh, volumes even in the spot market are low. The price is at historical lows and the utilities are not buying. The utilities believe that the prices may continue like this and they will continue like this and they have no need to act right now. And without the utilities, we're not gonna see the spot price move. But the longer the utilities are complacent, the more likely we are to see the price rocket. Because again, those production pipeline isn't there. Supply has been cut off. The demand is still growing. They still need to buy. And when those contract lifelines come off, we're all going to have to figure out, well, what is the real price of uranium? And it's not $23. It's not $25. It's not $30. Uh, we, we can't realistically see a scenario where this market is in balance anywhere in that realm. And that's why investors are really should be excited about this space, because that complacency is the investor's opportunity. So for more information on uh, the uranium market and uh, Denison Mines and what we're trying to do in the Athabasca Basin, definitely check out our website, denisonmines.com.